Hello again and welcome to our next web worship instalment. Um, this is going to mark the start of a, a, a series of connected thoughts, I hope. Um, <coughs> I have to say that I have bumped in a few folk as we've been walking the dogs around the village, not literally from a safe socially distanced distance. Um, and I'm very grateful for the positive comments that people have felt they should, could share about what we're trying to do through our web worship. Uh, so uh, I, I do appreciate that. <coughs> when we, whenever we come together, we, we worship God. Worship is the attitude, the inclination, the attenuation of our hearts. So it doesn't matter if we are sitting in a huge building or in a cupboard under the stairs if you're Harry Potter or wherever you are you can worship God just through your inner heart your inner soul singing out um, so I thought I'd put a couple of worship ones together these are a bit newer uh, both from Mission Parades though I think one of them might be in uh, CH4 uh, come now is the time to worship then purify my heart come now is the time to worship come now is the time to give Just as you are to worship, come just as you are before your God, come. <coughs> One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. So come. Now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. <coughs> Come, just as you are before.
cleanse me from my sin. Deep within, refiner's fire, my heart's one desire is to be holy, set apart for you, Lord. I choose to be come together perhaps we could just still our thoughts in a, a very short prayer let's pray heavenly father as we bring our worship to you wherever you are and whenever we are lord still our hearts may we find out that you are our focus that you are the very lord of our being that we have enthroned you in our lives and we recognise that there are bits in our, us that are still not perfect, but are being perfected by you. And so we confess our sin. Confident and sure of your forgiven love flowing to us and surrounding us, washing over us and making us new. And for that great hope, for that great promise, for the fulfilment of that in Christ, we give you thanks and praise. Amen. This little series, <coughs> as you can see, still coughing, is called Mind the Gap. And, and one thing that, that struck me in recent days has, has stimulated this. Uh, and so I felt I needed to write it down to make sure my thoughts were a bit more uh, structured. So you'll bear with me, I hope. You know, today many people are finding this period of forced isolation and distancing really hard. You might be one of them. I, I know I am. I'm missing my grandchildren and my family. But why do we find this so hard? I want to suggest something to you. You may disagree, but I think there is something in it. <coughs> One of the main contributors to this sense of anxiety that many are feeling, in fact mental health issues and demand on support service networks have increased hugely during this pandemic. And I think the reason for that is because our personal house of cards has collapsed and fallen in. Let me explain what I mean by that just a little bit. When we think about our life, and even when we talk about it, or the media talk about how people are coping, we compartmentalise everything. We put it in boxes. We talk about our work life, our social life, our family life, our church life, and as many other lives as you can think of. <coughs> we seem to have more lives than the proverbial cat. When we think of ourselves in this compartmentalised way, we begin to build artificial boundaries and divisions. I don't know if you've tried to build a house of cards, taking two cards, balancing them together on their edges, adding one on the top, then the next layer until you build it up and up. And it only takes the slightest tremble of hand or opening or closing door to cause a draft that brings it all down. And you're usually left holding the one that you're trying to get in place. This period of restriction is that trembling hand, that draft unexpectedly knocking down our house of cards. Home life is merging with work life and family life. And we can't box it up in the same way as we used to. Families are under pressure because there's no escape from one another. We can't be the projection we want to be in the different places we are used to. The persona we put on with our workwear 
can be very different from who we are at home or with friends. Moving from one to another almost gives us a break and a rest from the others. I know that when our boys were small, I would be up early to get out to work. And that sense of relief closing the door behind the chaos of morning breakfast and that getting ready for school routine. We want to present ourselves in different ways to different people, in the different compartments of our lives. We don't want colleagues to see the mess of our mornings before we've put our makeup on or our face has fallen into place or before we've had that second cup of coffee. But working from home challenges all of that. In the same way our facade that we show to the world can be very different from the one behind the front door. But now increasingly we only have the one behind the front door. And that is the face that is us. You know, the facade that, that struggles with the negative thoughts get stressed at the financial or work problems you face or experiences the crushing loneliness that see you weep in a corner if you're on your own. And so it's much easier to be out wearing the public face, <coughs> the strong face, the, the brave face. But there's a gap between these two faces. The one who we really are and the one we present to the world. As I see it, what this is one of the main stresses, the strains that people are experiencing during this time of lockdown. The truth is that we are not the sum of all the compartments or sections of our lives. What we have done is we have taken a whole life, a complete life, and we've divided it up into these different parts. We have divided it. The Bible reminds us that God sees the whole of who we are. We can't trick him with a church life face. He knows us inside out. We can't trick him with the professional working life face. He knows us inside out. Some may find that thought a little threatening because we really don't like what's in us. But for me, it gives me a reassurance that I don't need to cover up and hide who I am from God because in spite of who I am, he still loves me. We can join with the psalmist and say or sing from Psalm 139, Search me, O God, know my heart, test me, Know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me, in me and lead me in the way everlasting. A cry to find freedom from anxiety. And God offers us a way, the life everlasting. It's not just the removal of the things that are making us anxious. It's not changing the circumstances but it puts us on a different path, the way everlasting. We all have this tendency to compartmentalise. It's not new. The psalmist knew about that too. Listen to this. Hear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am devoted to you. You are my God. Save your servant who trusts in you. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I call out to you all day long. Bring joy to your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. You are forgiving and good. O Lord, abounding in love to all who call on you, hear my prayer. <coughs> Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. In the day of my trouble, I will call to you for you. <coughs> you. 
In the day of my trouble I will call to you, for you will answer me. Among the so-called gods there is none like you, O Lord. No deeds can compare with yours. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you, O Lord. They will bring glory to your name. For you are great and do marvellous deeds. You alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord. And I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. I will praise you, O Lord my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forever. God calls us to live with an undivided heart. And I know that that is easier said than done. And so the next few additions, episodes, whatever you want to call them, <coughs> of our web worship, we're going to focus on how we can narrow the gap between the compartments of our lives. Indeed, how we might be able to take them down because we don't actually need them and find the wholeness of life and the presence of God in each and every moment of our life with a changed perspective. Our insights, our understandings may also be transformed so when the doors are opened and lockdown is lifted, we don't simply rush back to the way things were, but instead we have a renewed sense of who we are in God. You are his loved, loved child. It's owning that. And allowing that to be transformative in us. Transformation summed up in the Easter season. Gifted through the cross, the grave and the empty tomb. The resurrection. That is our hope. That is our joy. So as we consider over the next few episodes. What it means to narrow the gap. To live undivided, compartmentalised lives. Perhaps this period of restriction will give us time to reflect, time to change. Let's pray for those who are struggling today. <coughs> Holy and gracious God, the psalmist knew that he could express his anxieties to you and that you would be there. We hear in the reports on the news that so many are finding this time of restriction so hard. They feel locked away in the anxiety of that increased pressure of being with family 24-7, of not being able to get out and get away, of the worries over work and over finance over health just seem to mount up and become an avalanche of anxiety. We can be anxious for those that we haven't seen for a long time, our loved ones, our families, our friends. Anxious because the usual routines that we, we find shape and give structure to our lives that have just been washed away and we feel adrift Lord may we find our anchor holding into the rock that is Jesus Christ and may others who find this this time anxious be surrounded by your presence and gifted a portion of your peace we pray <coughs> may we learn to walk the path of everlasting life of the way everlasting your life each and every day and so for words of encouragement that we receive whether through media whether through telephone calls whether through text messages however we thank you for they are precious to us and Heavenly Father I personally want to thank you for every single person in Kalernkirk, those who are joining us through these webcasts, 
I thank you for their openness to hear, to listen, to join in worship. We recognise we do it all at different times and in different places. But however we do it, may we find it a blessing. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> right, our final hymn is a golden oldie. Um, you probably know it to a different tune, but this is the tune I, I like doing it to. It's, it's, it goes better on the guitar. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunged beneath that blood lose all the guilty stains lose all the guilty stains lose all the guilty stains and sinners plunge beneath that blood lose all the guilty stains the dying feet rejoice to see that fountain in his day and there may I as vile as he wash all my sins away wash all my sins away wash all my sins away and there may I as vile as he wash all my sins away dear dying lamb your precious blood shall never lose its power till all the ransom church of God be saved to sin no more be saved to sin no I saw the stream, your flowing wounds supply. Redeeming love has been my theme, and shall be till I die, and shall be till I die, and shall be till I die. Redeeming love has been and shall be till I die. Then in the nobler, sweeter song, I'll sing your power to save. When this poor lisping, stammering tongue lies silent in the grave, lies silent in the grave, silent in the grave when this poor lisping stammering tongue lies silent in the grave for there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunge beneath that blood made a mess of that end then. <coughs> there is a fountain filled with
Fortunately, the god I know has a great sense of humour. Look at this. And it delights in our laughter and takes pleasure in all that we do if we give it to him. So may that God, the God who delights in you, hold you in the very palm of his hand, hold you close to his heart that you may hear it beat and take the rhythm of his life into your own and walk in the way everlasting.